afternoon, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. It has just crossed 12.01 p.m. We are officially in afternoon time here in Madison, Wisconsin. And without even looking at my videos, let's play Hunter. I want to get uh, try, try, I want to try to get a mix of the classes going up on my channel. So um, there's been a lot more Priest videos and Mage videos and Shaman videos than Hunter or Warlock. So let's catch Hunter up a little bit, even if he's not the most recent. I don't know. Plus, I have a Hunter Dominance quest. So we're trying to win five games here to earn 60 gold. That is the idea. All right. Well, here I'm going to grab Snake Trap. This uh, can potentially be absolutely devastating with uh, Starving Buzzard. So when uh, the Starving Buzzard is attacked, the three snakes pop, and then you get three cards. And these, these guards are, are decent epics, but uh, we'll, go for the, we'll go for the Snake Trap here. It's one that people don't always play around. Speaking of which, Deadly Shot is nice removal, but we'll go for the Buzzard because we do have that Snake Trap. And I'm going to take Explosive Trap here. The old me might have taken Argent Squire, but actually Explosive Trap, I found, is actually quite effective. It's like a delayed Consecration. It's like a Consecration that you can't let it go off whenever you want it to. But even for that, there are times when your opponent gets ahead, and, and then you can put this down, and it just completely holds the fort. All right. This is a beast, and hunters like beasts. Is it worth taking over a Flesh Eating Ghoul, which is one of the premier three drops in the game? I think actually, yeah. Because if I get a Hound Master, I can make this into a 4 9 with Taunt. I think I'm going to go for it. I mean, in the worst case, it's a 2 7, so yeah, it's kind of ignorable, and it dies to Stampeding friggin' Kodos. But I think the upside is worth taking in a Hunter deck. Alright, Mind Control Tech, I'm not a fan of. We'll just take the Master here for Impity Dimps. And here. Let me just take the opportunity to grab a Silence. This is a decent body as well. Not, I mean, the Worgen is nice and all, but uh, I just want to make sure we have one Silence here to get past Taunts and so forth. Multi-Shot could be good. Let's take another Buzzard for more cards. I've seen people use Unleash the Hounds. I, I think it's way, way, way too optimistic, and this is just total trash. So we'll take the Storm of Night, an actual playable card. Uh, here, the only good card, unfortunately, is the Silvermoon Guardian. I don't want more 4-drops, per se, at the moment, but that's the best I can do. Ancient Mage is not that great for Hunter, so we'll take Explosive Shot. This is a rare removal, both in the sense that it is actually a rare, but also in the sense that a lot of people, you know, won't play around it. Positioning matters. I mean, sometimes even I forget to uh, play around Explosive Shot and then pay, pay for it, so certainly other people do as well. Another Explosive Trap? Well, here I'm going to take Houndmaster. I think it's important. I do have uh, two Buzzards, a Snake Trap, and a Snap Jaw, so that's four beasts already. Yeah, that's a really important card. Didn't really work very well in my last arena, but I think it's an important card to have. Now, Multishot can be a blowout, but I'm going to say Kill Command. It's the much more straightforward removal, so it's much more uh, solid. And the Tundra Rhino is actually a really, really good beast. I'm passing on the on two Winfrey Harpies, by the way, not without noticing them. Uh, it is a very good... I'm starting to think it's actually a pretty good card, especially if you're trying to be aggressive. But the Tundra Rhino is a beast, draws me a card, makes my beasts charge. Uh, it can be buffed by the uh, Houndmaster. It just allows all kinds of craziness. We're going to have to take it there. Okay, so here I can take a Mediocre Beast just because it's a Beast or a Premier 3-drop. This time I'll take a Premier 3-drop. And uh, I guess I'll take the Quasi-Removal there. I'm a bit light on removal. Cult Master could be nice for drawing cards, especially with all these snakes and whatever, but we'll take a Senjin because we don't have any Taunt here, and that would be nice to have. Ha! So here I'm going to take Boulder Fist Ogre. Now, I prefer it over the Silverhand Knight because it survives Flame Strikes. And it even kind of survives Fireballs without a little bit of help. Uh, now, that's obviously against mages, but in general, it's nice to have just one big thing that you can drop down as the game nears its end. Sanjin is good, but I like the arcane shots in Arena to kill off early plays, which is very important. Ha! So I can take a second Houndmaster, or I can take a second Rhino. So I can take a second Enabler, or a second Abler. So how many beasts do I have? I got one, two, three, four, five... We'll take, a, we'll take a second Rhino. We got a lot of four drops here. We'll take a second Rhino. Let's make the Hound Master we already have better rather than trying to get more of them. Now, the Mana Wraith is a card I'm starting to have increasing respect for, but actually, Savannah High Man, I think, is just a bit too good not to take. Especially with the Hound Master. Ah, Hyena, that's wonderful. I, this is a bit of a tricky card to use properly, but I think I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. So, the Wolf is nice. It's a beast. It's actually a decent beast. It gives me buff. I don't have any of that. Deadly Shot is nice to have in your deck. In some cases, it's your only out, but I'm going to take the beast. I'm just going to go to win, try to win with creature play. Hmm, Houndmaster, got a lot of four drops, got one, two, three, four, five, six four drops, yeah, we're doing fine on that, let's actually just, let's just go for a late game hunter deck here, and try to win with good stuff, alright, third buzzard, yeah, I'll take a third buzzard, snipe's not great, and war golem, I mean, when I already have good stuff, it's not worth it, 
Okay, second kill command is great. It's really my favorite hunter, hunter removal card because it's so straightforward. Kobold Geomancer does work kind of nicely with the kill commands, but I think what I'm actually going to do is take this overhand knight for some more mid game. Uh, well, let's see. These are both great buff cards. I'm not going to take a trash beast over premier removal or from premier premier buffing cards. I'll take the Shattered Sun Cleric just because it's fitting into my curve better. And I'll take a second one. Yes, please. I could take a Taunting... Well, I'm getting a 3-drop. They're all bad. I guess I'll take the Taunting Monkey because it's a beast. And, oh man, I get lucky. A second Explosive Shot. I think this is a pretty strong Hunter deck. I think this might be one of the strongest Hunter decks I've drafted. I think it might be really hilarious when I go 0-3 with this deck. But you know what? I, I really think it's very good. It, it has an endgame. It has actual quality beasts. It feels to me like it has a nice mix of enablers and ablers. I should probably... <laughs> Sorry, I don't think I don't think that's like official terminology. Let's actually talk about what I mean. So a beast is an enabler because it enables the Houndmaster to be good. So the Houndmaster, I guess by pattern, is an enabler. Really sad to be playing a mage first thing. Um, I could keep my removal. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna keep my removal and try to have a slow start, and then hope I can win later in the game with my good stuff. So I don't want to keep my six drop by any means, but you know, it'd be nice to keep on drawing cards. Maybe I can luck into some of the early plays. This is obviously not playable unless it's killing something, but I've got removal for one creature, removal for a couple of small creatures, and then this on turn four with the coin, perhaps. You know, something like that might work. Gilgeis. I seem to be doing all right against mages after that one arena where I lost to three of them and went three and three. Um, I, won't, I won't say which one it was, so it's kind of like a soft spoiler. I uh, haven't really been excited to have find mages, but I guess I've been going about 50-50 with them. Granted, going 50-50 with them in the arena, where I, you know, win more games than I lose on average, is, is actually showing that, this, that, the card, that the class is a very good one against me. Okay, Stormy Champion, not the most exciting thing to see, but if it, I mean, if we can survive to the late game, we'll be alright. We've got some helper cards to get there. Alright, my opponent has a slow start as well. I don't begrudge her that at all, one bit. Blue Warrior is not playable here. I don't want it to just die. A little steady shot. And looks like on turn four, I'm going to coin one of these out and play the other on turn five. Can't imagine what else would happen. All right, so the Raging Worgen, I don't mind it in the slightest spending my whole turn kill commanding it. I could also play Shattered Sun Cleric. Hmm, interesting. So if I play the Shattered Sun Cleric, I'm inviting my opponent to trade, but then she can, like, ping it, tell me for four, trade the Shattered Sun Cleric. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just keep it simple. Keep it simple, keep it safe. Uh, next turn we can, I'll probably play this one first, because I don't have any, uh, beasts coming up to charge with. But if I, like, say, draw a Houndmaster, or my opponent plays something this can kill, then I will, uh, play it instead. Well, that's actually not that great. So what we'll do here is it is indeed time for the coin. Silverhand Knight's not the greatest against this. This can kill the Squire, and then with the help of hero ability, kill the Silverhand Knight also. So that's not super great, I have to say. Ross Nova. Well, uh, this early in the game, don't really mind it that much. And Mirror Image. Well, this is actually not something I'm too bothered by, because basically, what I get to do now is play... It's changed my plans a little bit. I'm going to play Explosive Trap. And so now my opponent is in this awful position where, you know, she doesn't know if it's Explosive Trap or if I'm, if I'm just faking it. Silence, uh, nope, we'll just Explosive Trap it up. Do I want a Snake Trap here? As well? I'm um, sure, we'll Snake Trap. The disadvantage of playing two traps is, to my opponent's eyes, it's now more likely that one of them is Explosive Trap, so she doesn't want to attack. But I don't actually want her to attack me. Uh, and I win the RNG contest, she's going to have to spend two more mana or use one of her students if she wants it to die. She actually, oh my god, wow. Okay, my opponent definitely screwed up. She played, like, right into Explosive Trap. Now, I'm not saying it was a mistake to attack. I mean, you gotta clear out the Explosive Trap at some point. But making an extra 1-1 one, one before you attack, that was definitely a mistake. Okay, we got a Starving Buzzard here. Hmm. I'd like to play the Trunder Rhino and the Starving Buzzard, but the issue is that that's 7 mana. I can't, however, do anything else. I can't play Starving Buzzard now. Bah, this sucks. And I'm wasting these battle cries. Ball sacks. What is this? Oh, this is Snake Trap. Hmm, okay. I will play a Starving Buzzard. Alright, I'll do it. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll buff it up. So, basically, if my opponent 
runs the Farseer into the Buzzard, I get to draw three cards. If she has Frostbolt for the Buzzard, that's very sad. She has, of course, Frostbolt for the Buzzard. Of course she has Frostbolt for the Buzzard! <sighs> well, here come the Snakes. Uh, I guess they're not really that great right now. I'm getting some extra damage on the board here, I suppose. This is actually... The snakes are, like, so terrible against us. You know what would have been a good beast to see in my draft? Uh, Stampede and Kodo. Didn't see it, though. This buffs my snakes, and they still can't kill the Gorobashi, but I'm gonna play him anyway. And just deal six damage to my opponent. That's pretty good, right? Kind of six damage for two mana. Seems good. The Gorobashi can kill a snake and get enraged, but I can silence it, so I'm not that bothered by it. Flame Strike. Okay, so she's actually going to enrage the Gurubashi against the Stormwind Champion. Hmm. Well, the advantage of that is it's at one life at that point. And actually, I have the card advantage because of um, my snakes. No, my snakes. My snake type didn't trigger. Why do I have card advantage? I didn't draw any cards off the buzzard. I don't know. I guess I just killed a bunch of stuff with my creatures. All right. Well, she surely, she really should do this. I don't see why she wouldn't. Unless she has Arcane Missiles. Ah, maybe she has Arcane Missiles and she's wondering, like, do I take the 50-50? Yeah, I would, I would do it. You play Arcane Missiles, take your 50-50. And then if it fails, you still trade. But you might as well take it. No, maybe that's not Arcane Missiles. Hungry crap. Well, my opponent had a bad pick right there, that's for sure. So I could play Tundra Rhino, silence this thing. Yeah, it seems good. Oh, I don't have enough mana for that. Well, we'll uh, do a little different plan then. We'll play Tundra Rhino, use the Murloc to kill the Gurubashi, and we'll just kill the crap. Well, my opponent's got two cards to my four, and I started with a creature on the board, so I guess I'm ahead in this game, although anything can happen still. I'd love to see Houndmaster or a Savannah High Main. A charging Savannah High Main is awesome. Oh, my opponent has another Frostbolt, because of course she does. And an Abomination. Uh, well... Hmm. It might not be the end of the world. Let's just, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. Draw a card. Explosive shot. Alright, well, uh, yeah, I'll just play this thing. It's fine. So I can all, if this kills my buzzard, as is likely, I can always just silence it, finish it off with my golem. Uh, and then keep swinging with this. If my opponent plays another creature, um, that has five toughness, I could actually just kill that creature with explosive shot and then finish off the abomination too. While I'm at it. Santa Jaime. Hmm. Well, let's just do this, I think. Well, hang on. I could just throw away the golem. Then the golem lit will die. This will go down to two health. What else am I doing with my turn? I could play this and keep more health on it, but it's keeping all the health on it because it's silenced. Haha. -ha. Alright, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. So Polymorph is a very good answer to it. Obviously that stops the uh Death Rattle, and also uh, Flame Strike and Blizzard are good answers to it because the hyenas just die. I'm a bit safe from Flame Strike, though. This has five health and this has six. She's a secret. Okay, I don't really care that much about the secret. We'll probably send in uh, this thing. Although it's my, it's my second hardest hitter. Hmm. Let's see. Let's um. Let's actually do this and fish for Mirror Entity. It's not mirror entity. Okay, let's just kill this thing. Let's use that to fish for vaporize. Ice barrier. Well, that's actually probably the best one for me. I mean, my opponent is in top deck mode against this board. Flame strike would actually kill everything. However, then the, there would be two hyenas here. So the hy the, this death main is good, and that would be her whole turn. So I'd still swing for four damage. Arcane Intellect. Okay, she could still Flame Strike, but then um, she doesn't have enough energy to finish this off. Another secret. Okay. And that thing. All right. Well, let's take a look at the situation. We have a Shattered Sun Cleric. Hmm. I think I'll put a Shattered Sun Cleric on this. Can I win? Three. It's, no, it's not Mirror Entity. Three, eight. I do have enough damage to win, but the problem is it's very unlikely that that's what I was what it is. I mean, if it's uh, if it's vaporize, I win, don't I? 12, 14. Yeah, so if it's vaporize, I win. So let's fish for the vaporize. Uh, okay, it might be an ice block or a counter spell of some sort. So what you always want to do is... I'm actually messing up. You always want to... In case of ice block, always want to 
get your opponent as low as possible before you do a lethal damage. I probably could have gotten her lower than three. It's not Ice Bluff, though. It seems like it was a Spellbender or a counter spell. so that's the game. All right, well, that was a really solid start. We just used our good creatures, our tough creatures to win. There were no Flame Strikes during that game, and that definitely makes it easier to beat a mage. We are one-fifth of the way up to Hunter Dominance, and let's go ahead and keep on playing. So I, I do like those Dominant Quests, as I mentioned, because they just give you, like, more gold per quest. It's, like, 20 extra gold compared to a um, regular quest. You'll note that I am going down in gold. I mean, I was hovering around 3,000. So now I'm down to 25.10. So I've had a kind of bad streak earlier this week, but we had a couple of good runs lately. We'll see if we can get up to seven wins here. That'd be nice to restore my win percentage to 50%. So at the moment, my success rate is about 60%. It's a little bit less. Uh, so it'd be nice to get it up to... I'd, be, I'd basically be okay with it being at 50% after the game settles out. I'm going to keep this because it's... Actually, you know what? This dies to Shadow Word Pain. Nah, we'll just fish for our earlier plays. Keep this for removal... Okay, well, the Shattered Sun Cleric, I do have two of them. Um, the disadvantage of playing with two is that oftentimes it will show up to the party a little bit early and have nothing to buff. Now, this wolf's uh, chance of surviving is very low on turn two. Holy Smite, Shadow Word Pain is very likely. Hmm, now we actually have to add an arcane shot to the list of possibilities. Okay, well, let's play the wolf, see what we get. If he got Arcane Shot, then, you know, he's got the Arcane Shot. I'll probably just play this on turn 3 as a 3-3 three, three for 3. Not the greatest thing in the world, but it's better than doing nothing. Board presence is quite important in this game. Seems like my opponent didn't steal Arcane Shot, or he'd use it to kill the wolf. He could have stolen the wolf himself, Snake Trap, or a Shattered Sun Cleric. I could have pain. Well, I don't mind seeing that, so I still don't know what my opponent stole. Um, but we'll play Shattered Sun Cleric here, and only give my opponent one card off of the Acolyte. This is a pretty strong board, actually. This, actually, with the wolf around, can't be Shadow Worded, which is nifty. We've got an Explosive Trap here, although with minions on the board, Explosive Trap is less effective. Like, when you're ahead with strong minions, Explosive Trap is kind of dumb, because your, oppo your opponent's not going to attack you for a while. Ah, Silence. That's actually a very clever play. Because it basically enables my opponent to use Shadow Word on my Cleric. And I think we're actually going to... Well, let's see. If I play Snake Trap, my opponent attacks the Wolf, pops the Snakes, and then just Holy Novas. The Snakes just all die, which is, seems a little bit silly. Let's actually just keep the pressure up. I'll, I'll get rid of his 2-drop. I'll swing, swing, and play a Premier 3-drop here. Also resistant to Hunter removal... Or, excuse me, uh, Priest removal. Doesn't die to Holy Nova. Survives it with enough health. And Shadow Word Pain kind of sucks to use against it because the Nova or the, the Golem pops right back up. So here I have Snake Trap, but I'd like to actually see a Holy Nova first before Snake Trap. Oh man, Twilight Drake, I get to silence this thing. Um, yeah. I mean, what better use of silence is there than that? Chillwind Yeti, more like Chillwind Nyeti. Get it? Because I'm Russian and Nyet is Russian for no. Okay, anyway, we're going to move right along here. Uh, okay. Holy Nova would not be that great. It would be the whole turn, only two of my creatures would die, the other two live. Unless there's another Holy Nova coming up. I mean, there's still potentially an Arcane Shot, a Snake Trap, a Shattered Sun Cleric, or a Wolf in my opponent's hand. I still haven't seen what he Mind Vision, and he doesn't want to show me, either. He's like, I do not want you to know what I did last summer. Okay, I'll tell you. Last summer, I Mind Visioned one of your cards, but I do not want you to know... Which card it was. Is this going to be the secret? Ah, that would be very clever. No, okay. Got the Shattered Sun Cleric. So maybe that was what he stole? Uh, Shattered Sun Cleric from me? Hmm. Okay, well, I think this is the time for the Yeti. Now, do I kill this Pine Size Summoner? Do I respect it, basically? Or do I hit for an extra three damage? What have I got here? Seven, nine, eleven. God, that is a lot of damage. Yeah, I think we're just going to go for the throat here. Basically, my opponent can't just play a good creature. He has to play an amazing creature. Holy Nova Slow doesn't really work, because this, this lives. And then this will pop some snakes. So if he Holy Nova's first... I guess the smart move is first attack, let the snakes pop, then Holy Nova to kill off the snakes. He had the amazing... Well, that, that, that qualifies as an, as an amazing creature. I don't have any silences anymore to strip of this of the taunt, and none of my stuff hits for five. So uh, it's going to be really difficult for me to get past that. I don't have my... um. Kill commands here. 
Kill Command would be fantastic. I could pop Divine Shield with the damaged Golem. The Wolf is still a beast despite being silenced, so the Kill Command would just kill this. And then I'd be able to swing for the win. As it is, it's going to be harder. Okay, well, we're going to swing with my hero ability, I mean. And consider, so I could pop, pop and then attack with two creatures to kill this. Wait, I swing for seven damage. I win the game! <laughs> okay. Remember, kids, always look for the win. I think my opponent saw me think, and then he saw me realize that I'm winning. Okay, let's just go ahead and do that. All right, well, I made the right decision in the end to just um, hold the fort and go for the throat. And that is it. So, as always, we'll play just a couple of games here in this first video, and if you're liking how the arena's running, then stay tuned, because the rest of the games are going to be coming up very soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and or subscribe, and I shall see you again shortly. Till then!